We're back with Ohio governor and former Republican presidential candidate John Kasich in town for the Republican Governor's Conference, and he also met with President Trump on Friday. Governor, you met with the president to talk about health care. Where do you think he is in his thinking about reforming the Affordable Care Act? Well, you know, I kind of outlined for him the things that I thought would work. I mean, the program needs reformed. I mean, if you look over on the exchange side, some of these companies are melting down, and you don't want to have the whole all the exchanges collapse. And you also don't want to be in a position of where you don't cover uh, these 20 million Americans. You have to make sure that you have a system that's reformed, that's more affordable, uh, but and is going to work, but we're just not going to pull the rug out from under people. He listened intently to me, got uh, the Secretary Price on the phone, uh, right? We were there, the two of us, and uh, here's what I think the problem is. The question is, are Democrats going to work with Republicans to fix this, this system? Um, what I'm hearing is uh, they know, you know, you Republicans didn't work with us when we did Obamacare. We're not going to work with you. And that's, that's kind of like fifth grade stuff, because what's at risk are all these people who are now getting coverage and we don't want to see it denied to them. I guess Democrats would say, but they just want to they want to repeal it. They don't want to fix it. They just want to well, take I, the, I, what's I, your I, sense I, of that I, in terms of the president's thinking? I, uh, I, look, I can't read his mind, but I felt it was very positive. He responded very positively to a number of the ideas I had. And the, the fact of the matter is you can't just repeal without repealing and replacing at the same time. It, it just becomes an, a political impossibility, and there's no reason to do it any other way than that. I wonder what you make of what uh, former Speaker John Boehner said recently. But most of the Affordable Care Act, in, in the framework is going to stay there. I shouldn't have called it repeal and replace because that's not what's going to happen. They're basically going to fix uh, the, the flaws and uh, put a more uh, conservative uh, box around it. Do you agree with that characterization of it? I think he's pretty close to where, if, if it gets done, I mean, there's going to be a problem in the House of getting anything out of there that still pr provides coverage to people. That's well, why the d Republicans have to reach out to some of the Democrats. I don't know whether this problem? is going to happen. Explain, explain that problem to me. Well, because I think there are some very conservative Republicans in the House who are going to say, just get rid of the whole thing. And, you know, that's not acceptable when you have 20 million people or 700,000 people in my state. Because where do the mentally ill go? Where do the drug addicted go? And, look, I don't understand everything that's going on with these town halls. But what I think it's, it's having an impact from the standpoint of, hey, the people are watching. Uh, I don't think they mind reform, but don't take everything away. Jo John, let me tell you, the Republicans can go and do what they want and I'm going to talk to them. But at the end of the day, I'm going to stand up for the people that, that wouldn't have the coverage if they don't get this thing right. And I happen to believe that the best way to get this, get this right over time is for actually both parties to work together. I know that's considered an impossibility now. But what's at stake is not some political thing. What's at stake here are 20 million Americans. Let me move on to the question of leaks in Washington. You are no longer of Washington, but you know how the place works. Um, there are it leaks like a sieve. <laughs> I mean, come on. And is, are we in a new age, or is this kind of what you see? Uh, you look to Washington, and it looks pretty much like it always has to you. I, I, well, the leaks are the same, but what Washington doesn't look like to me when I was here is that if you're not of the same political party, we don't like you. And there's fighting inside the parties, but there's fighting between the parties. And when we're divided and fighting all the time, nothing really significant can get done. Um, the partisanship is amazing. But there's one other thing. People are, are only consuming news that they happen to agree with, whether it's regular news or whether it's fake news. So we live in a, si a silo. If I'm a liberal, I just consume liberal stuff. If I'm a conservative, I just consume conservative stuff. And by the way, I'm an expert. And how dare you try to tell me how things ought to work? Let me ask you a specific question about something that's been in the paper, which is that the Intelligence Committee chairmen in the House and the Senate were called by the White House and said, hey, will you help us out with these stories about leaks? What do you, th is that, what do you think about that? Well, there, I remember there were leaks back when I was here, that some of which came out of the Intelligence Committee. And uh, I think that when people take an oath to be secret in the Intelligence Committee, which is the committee that doesn't get any publicity, thank goodness, but it's the committee that's at the root of the security of our country. When people leak there, they need to really be held accountable. And, if, and, and on, in terms of this investigation, there needs to be some cooperation, House and Senate intelligence. Yeah. They need to get to the bottom of all this. 
and they need to do it together. And um, you know, I, I think that's the way we should proceed. But leaks are not acceptable out of the Intelligence Committee. If the Intelligence Committee chairman are looking into the administration, how can they also defend the administration? Do you see a conflict there? Well, look, I'm a Republican, but I put my country before my party. My party is my vehicle, not my master. If you are the chairman of the Budget Committee or the Intelligence Committee, it is your job to lead for the best of the country. It's not your job to think about, well, what's my party going to say or what's the White House going to say? Or, I mean, come on, John. I mean, this is, what's, this is what's at the root wrong when people think it's my party more than it is my country. You were a critic of the president's. You've now met with him. What gives you hope about the president? Well, I mean, he listened to me. And as I said, you know, I'm on a plane and he's the pilot. And, you know, the fact is that I want the pilot to be successful. But you know what? Every once in a while, I was thinking about this last night, you need to yell into the cockpit. And what I told the White House is, look, I mean, since I was a young man here at the age of 30, I had fought at times with Reagan, President Reagan, with President Bush. My job is when you do a good job, praise you. And when you do something I don't agree with and, I'm, and I feel compelled, I'm going to speak out. And when I said that in this meeting, there were a few more people in the Oval Office, they said, yeah, we noticed, okay? <laughs> but I'm not doing that to try to further anything other than if I don't agree with something, I've got to say it as long as I'm not being self-righteous. You know, what I worry about is being hoisted on my own self-righteous petard. I have to be careful of that. Now, check that out in Google. Amen, Governor. We, <laughs> we all do. Governor Kasich, thanks Thank so much. Thank you, John, very much. We've got a lot more Face the Nation coming up, and we'll be right back.